Let's focus in on two verses from our scripture focus. Um, the first one is verse 19. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon so that I may be cheered by news of you. And here's the second one. Still, I think it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier. Now, have you ever read the Bible and got to verses like that and wondered to yourself, what does that have to do with me? Have you ever thought to yourself, well, that sounds just like a specific situation that happened back then and really has nothing to do with me today? And so maybe you're wondering, well, maybe is the Bible irrelevant? Is it stuck back in those times? It's only speaking to those times back then? Well, certainly there was something specific going on here, yes. And that situation we do believe was resolved. And we're not sitting here today waiting for Timothy or Epaphroditus to show up. It's not a promise to us today. It's something that happened back then that there was Paul in prison, either in Rome or Ephesus, we're not terribly sure, but Paul was in prison, and when you're in prison, your friends and family had to help make sure that you had food. So here are the Christians in Philippi sending money to Paul in prison so that he could have food. And so something happened to Epaphroditus. Maybe he was late in getting back to Philippi. And so it sounds like there's rumors going around he, he might be ill. Maybe there's some other rumors going by that uh, around that maybe he took the money and ran. Uh, maybe he wasn't as trustworthy as we thought. But here is Paul sending a letter back saying, no, in fact, he was ill. And so take him back. He's a great guy. Uh, here he is uh, coming back to you with news from me. And um, so here it's a very specific situation. And actually, that is the reason for this letter of the book of Philippians being written. You see, it's not just like God tapped Paul on the shoulder and said, I want you to tell some things to, uh, to all people everywhere but rather there's a real situation here happening. And so Paul is writing a thank you letter. Thank you for this. Uh, and by the way, Epaphroditus, he, he was ill. And, and so you, you can trust him. And by the way, I'm gonna send Timothy to you soon. I'm sending Epaphroditus first, but Timothy will come later when we find out if I'm gonna be alive or dead because Paul's sitting there in prison waiting to find out if he's going to be executed or not. So, so there is a really real situation going on here. And the whole book of Philippians was written because of a real situation. So is it relevant to us today then? Good question. And what we want to do here is think about what the Bible is and what the Bible is not. And let's first think about what the Bible is not. The Bible is not like the Quran. What we have in the Quran, which is the scriptures of the, the Islamic people, is Muhammad saying, God told me to tell all of you this, and this is, by the way, is good for everybody for all time in all places. And it really does read like a lot of sermons. I've actually read through it myself in the English, of course, and it just reads like a lot of sermons, really. And so the Bible that we have, the Christian scriptures, do not read like that. And the Jewish scriptures, which of course are part of the Christian scriptures, it's the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, they don't read like that at all. Rather, it's very complex. And there's a lot of situations in all of the books. You can, you can recognize that there is a situation that has caused this book to come about. There's a situation that caused this writer to write. You know, Paul's just not writing in a vacuum. God didn't tap him on the shoulder saying, send some truth to the, to the Christians in Philippi. No, there's a real situation that brought about this book. So what the Bible isn't is, well, actually, let's let the Bible describe itself to us, and that will tell us what the Bible isn't. And here we have some very familiar scriptures from 2 Timothy 3, uh, 15 and 16. And here he's, Paul's talking to Timothy, of all people. And he says, uh, how from childhood you have known the sacred writings. That's another word for scriptures. You've known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture, all these sacred writings, all scripture is inspired by God, is inspired by God. And it says a wee bit, says a wee bit more that we'll get to again later. But it's inspired by God. And, and very often the term is used there in some translations of God breathed. That tells us what the Bible is not. It is not God dictated. And that's something very different. It's not God dictated as if God is taking over Paul's mind, Peter's mind, and the rest, as if God's taking over their minds and they just become uh, how, how God writes. 
That's not how it worked. No, actually, Paul's mind was engaged here. Peter's mind was engaged here. James' mind was engaged. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all of the writers of scripture, their minds were fully engaged in what they were doing, but it was God breathed. You see, the scriptures, we know now not what, what, what they are not. They are not God dictated, but let's look now at what they are. They are God breathed, which means that there's real situations happening here. Why are there real situations happening here? Because God has a relationship with people and it's gone back a long, long way. And so what we have in the Bible then is this record of that relationship with all of the twists and turns that are in that relationship, with all the joys and the sorrows that are a part of that relationship, with all the drama sometimes that goes along with, that can go along with a relationship. It's the record of a long-standing relationship between God and humanity. And a big part of that relationship is this idea of, it just comes through again and again and again from God's end, I love you and I wanna do something good for you. I love you. And so as we recognize God's love for us, we should not be surprised then that the scriptures, that the record of that relationship should be something that God would be involved writing. It's as if the writers of scripture, they're involved, yes, in, in recording some element of this, of this relationship. And, and here we have Paul in writing to Philippi. Uh, Paul has reflected on what it means that Jesus has risen from the dead and, and all the implications on theology, all that has gone through Paul's mind, but it has God's blessing. And so we have like in the book of Philippians, we have, this is how it's being worked out. As, as we recognize that Jesus is Lord and as we've reached out to people with this good news and this is how it's being worked out. And, and so there's these situations that cause the scriptures to be written. And yet we see that because God loves us, he wants to leave a record for us that is trustworthy. And so it's God breathed. And so when Paul speaks about the implications of the resurrection of Jesus, that he is Lord, when he speaks about the implications of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and the forgiveness of sin, God's, yeah, all that passes through Paul's mind to think about, but it also is, is God is part of it too. It's as if, it, it's as if God is a co-author here uh, with the scripture writers. And so what we do find in the Bible is it's very much responses to various situations. It's a record of, of this relationship. It's not just God tapping on the shoulder and saying, okay, I'm gonna take over your mind now, and so dictating. It's not God dictated, but it is God breathed from a very, very long relationship. How therefore do we read it then? Knowing what the Bible is and what it isn't, how therefore do we read it? Well, the first thing is we want to read it as deep people. Uh, when we pick up the Bible, let's, let's be growing in depth ourselves. Let's be asking the Holy Spirit's guidance as we read. Uh, that's the first thing. But let's also recognize, and you've, if you've been around Calvary much, you've heard me say this many times. I'm going to keep saying it because I think it's important. The Bible was not written to you, but it was written for you. The Bible was not written to you, but it was written for you. And so one of the things we want to do as we pick up the Bible and read is recognize actually who the Bible was written to and why and when and what the situation was. And that will help us to read scripture deeply. That's something we want to do as we pick up the Bibles and read is we want to read deeply. We want to dig deeply. We don't want to just read off, off the surface of things and, uh, and therefore take the take the passage in the wrong direction. We wanna read deeply and know the context of why these things are written as they are. And so reading deeply is one thing. We want to, to read the Bible as deep people. We want to read the Bible uh, in a deep way, looking at the context. But we also want to read with humility. We want to, to read with, with some humility about what we're reading and, and not just read something and say, oh, I've got it. Uh, because sometimes we, we don't have it. Along with reading the Bible with greater humility, we can read it with greater confidence. The confidence that because God loves us, it is God-breathed. Certainly God's, God was involved in, in the creation of the scriptures, not just the creation of the scriptures, the writing of it in the first place, 
but sometimes there's maybe editing has taken place in some of the books. God's involved in that too. Uh, there's also keeping them safe, the scriptures safe. And there's also collecting them together in a whole collection like the book of Psalms is really a collection of various writings that were brought together at some point. The entire Old Testament is a collection that was brought together at some point. The New Testament was a collection of writings brought together at some point. And that whole series from the writing in the originals to, to actually the collection together and forming it into one thing we now know as, as the Bible took a long time. But you know what? God loves us. So we can have great confidence that he's not going to have us steered in wrong directions. So the Bible as we have it is, is we can trust it. We also want to have, uh, read it with an eye open for training and let's call it training in righteousness. And I'm getting that right from that, uh, those verses again from, uh, from Paul to Timothy. Uh, how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. And so for training in righteousness. So as we read uh, the scriptures, we can think about training in righteousness. So our scripture focus today, I could have preached a sermon on, well, look at Timothy, look at Epaphroditus. They're good examples of, of people who, who match what Paul has been calling for from the Christians in Philippi to have the mind of Christ. Guess what? Like Timothy, like Epaphroditus. And preach a sermon on, let's watch out for people who can be mentors to us in our lives. People who have the mind of Christ. So there's training in righteousness there. But the last thing is, we don't want to read the scriptures only with this idea of always looking for the moral of the story. Only looking for this of idea of this now is how we should live. It's not just about that. But it's also reading the Bible with both eyes open to see the whole story. The whole story of God loving people, creating us for relationship. And here's just part of the story uh, where Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Yeah, we're not expecting Timothy and Epaphroditus to show up here. So when we read that passage of scripture saying that Paul's sending them to us, He's not speaking to us. He's speaking to the Christians back in Philippi back then, almost 2,000 years ago. And so we might read that and think, what does that have to do with us? Is it the Bible irrelevant? <laughs> Actually, the Bible couldn't be more relevant because it speaks to us about that separation between ourselves and God because of sin. And it speaks to us about what God has done about that through the things that we focus in on and as we partake of the bread, a symbol of his body, which is broken for us. As we partake of the cup, which is a symbol of Christ's blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. The scriptures are a wonderful witness to God's relationship with us for over a thousand years by a multiplicity of witnesses talking about that relationship in different aspects and in different situations, how it's working out. And so the scriptures are just as wonderful, deep and complex telling of the story of, of humanity and God. And it's a true story. It's also a love story. And it's also a story that you and I can be a part of. And so could the Bible, is it irrelevant? It could not be more relevant because it speaks to us about the truth. Let's focus on the truth today. Let's remember the truth today through the Lord's table. And it's not necessary. I, I'm going to invite you to participate with me uh, to, as we do so, we're going to remember this, this story, this true story and this love story. And it's not necessary to be a formal member of this church, Calvary Baptist or any church to participate with us, but rather that you recognize yourself in this story, that when you hear about our separation from God because of sin, that you're like, yeah, that includes me. And that when you hear about what God has done for us through Jesus Christ, his blood shed for the forgiveness of sins, the flowing of his grace at the cross, that yeah, 
That's a true story, and that story includes me. And if that's you today, you're welcome to participate with us in the Lord's table. If that's not you today, if that doesn't describe you today, well, I'm certainly glad that you're with us this day. And so let's, uh, let's participate together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this bread, this cup, but we thank you, Lord, moreover, what these are symbols of, the broken body of Christ, the shed blood of Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that this story that we, that we read about in the Bible, that it's a true story. And we thank you that it's a love story. And it's a, we thank you, Lord, that it's a story that impacts our lives in marvelous ways. It's a, it's a story that we are a part of, that we are privileged to be a part of. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for you, your love, your grace, your mercy. And Lord, may we focus on where we are in that story as we participate this day. Jesus said, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.